So do you guys want to hear something absolutely insane? When I first started with aligners, I didn't have any issues with any of my cases until my 20th one. It was this, I had a posterior open bite, but I was able to troubleshoot it and fix it. And I'm showing you guys this because I want you to know that this actually works because if I could do this, so can you. But it wasn't always like this. When I started, I was clueless because I was never taught how to do aligners in dental school. I was always struggling to figure out the best use of my time. I was always struggling to figure out how to offer offer it as efficiently as possible without causing harm to my patients. I spent over thousands of hours, tried several strategies, watched countless webinars, and I found more ways how to do this procedure the wrong way before I figured out how to do it the most predictable and profitable way. And I'm going to save you the thousands of hours and battle scars and just tell you how to avoid and correct posterior open bites in your aligner cases. And I'm going to do this in a step-by-step -step case review with you as well. So posterior open bites don't just happen out of thin air, okay? There are four ways that they happen. And if they do, first off, don't panic, just breathe, okay? If you have a posterior open bite, you have to stop and figure out how did it happen? And depending on how it happened is gonna determine how you are gonna fix it. And the four reasons are passive intrusion from aligners, anterior interference, molar tipping, or an iatrogenic issue. So before we move forward in the training, I just want you to know that this works for all brands. It is brand agnostic. So whether you're using Invisalign, SureSmile, ClearCorrect, Candid, OrthoFX, Spark, you can take this principles and apply it to all of the brands. So most docs when starting out don't have a protocol to follow, right? And when there's no protocol, that's when you leave the door open for random mistakes to happen that can really derail your cases. And one of those disasters can be the dreaded posterior open bite. And I fell prey to this. I got a posterior open bite on my 20th case. And I'm going to share this with you. And then I'm going to go over the four causes of posterior open bites, how to avoid them and how to treat them. But before we dive into this case, why are posterior open bites bad? Well, for one, they cause a problem with your patient patient's occlusion because their back teeth don't come together anymore, but also because this ends up taking even more trays and chair time to correct, which ultimately leads to this case being unprofitable. So here is my big screw up, the posterior open bite case. Now, this patient wanted to improve their crowding so that they could floss better. And I didn't listen to my mentor at the time because they told me not to move molars. And for whatever reason, I thought that I could move the molars. I listened to one of the supporting orthodontists with Invisalign who was helping me out on this case and I followed their protocols. And so we resolved the crowding as you can see at the top, but we got a posterior open bite. So what did I do? I panicked. I texted my mentor. I was freaking out. I was sweating bullets. I was so uncomfortable. I thought I was going to be sick. She told me to just calm down, take a breath. And she walked me through figuring out how to fix this. And so in this case, a couple things happened. First of all, the molars tipped instead of rotating and translating. And we didn't get all of the planned anterior intrusion in the teeth. So at this point, I took off all of the patient's attachments and I put horizontal ones on the molars and I just did pure extrusion of the molars to try to get them to touch again. I also did anterior IPR and planned for more anterior intrusion. And so luckily this ended up being resolved, but it scared the hell out of me. I didn't let this case define me as a clinician, however, because I had several other successful cases under my belt, but I would be lying to you if I said that it didn't shake me. This is when I learned my lesson to be intentional about what teeth to move and when. But how do we prevent something like this from happening in the first place? Well, one way is you can avoid passive intrusion from aligners. So if you had passive intrusion on a case, you would resolve it by cutting the trays wherever that posterior open bite is. And then what you do is you let gravity take over and move those molars back into occlusion. And this usually resolves in about two to four weeks. If you want to avoid this from happening altogether, put anterior bite ramps on all of your cases, except for anterior open bites. This ensures that the posterior teeth are not occluding with each other during treatment. This is what ends up leading to that passive intrusion. So if you put the bite ramps on it, you can avoid this altogether. The second reason for a posterior open bite is anterior interference. And this is common in deep bite cases because what happens is, is the program is planning for a certain amount of anterior intrusion, which is when the teeth are supposed to move back down into the bone. But in 
in reality, that movement is very difficult and doesn't always happen to the extent at which it was planned. So then what happens? You see the red areas there in the interior? That's showing us that the tooth has a heavy contact and it's hitting before the posterior teeth do. And so how do you fix this? Well, you would remove that interference with your diamond football bird to help equilibrate the bite and free up that space so that way the back teeth can actually come together. Now, if that interference is significant in the front, then you have to do IPR between the teeth and the front to create a little bit of space. And then you're able to then retract and intrude those anterior teeth, which then allows for all the teeth to come together again, which would eliminate that posterior open bite. And now if it's super extreme and you can't fix any of that, then this is a situation where you would use elastics. However, elastics in adults can be very difficult and not that predictable to do. And so my recommendation to ensure that you don't have to go through this is to make sure that you are getting that planned anterior intrusion by not taking on cases like severe deep bites with greater than four millimeters of that anterior deep bite. Okay, another reason for posterior open bites is molar tipping. So how do you avoid this? Don't move the molars from the beginning. What happens is when you try to buckly translate a maxillary molar, right? Just physically moving this tooth, the trays are putting force on the palatal surface of the crown of the tooth, like you see with the blue arrow. So in a perfect world, that tooth is just gonna translate to the buckle like this. Boop, there you go. This doesn't happen in real life though. In reality, the palatal root exists and that acts as a leverage point. So then the tooth ends up tipping out instead of translating. This is how you get the posterior open bite. So if they tipped, you can't get them to go lingual again. At this point, you have to do pure extrusion and to try to get them to occlude. And in this case, do not cut the trays because if you cut the trays, you are going to put yourself in a huge jam. If you do that, that palatal cusp of the tip molar is going to extrude down into the central groove of the mandibular molar and your posterior open bite will be stuck just like that. The fourth cause of posterior open bite is an iatrogenic posterior open bite. And this happens when you try to constrict an arch by distalizing the canines. And to avoid this, you need to place G6 attachments on premolars and molars when you're constricting that arch or trying to distalize those canines. And this ensures that the posterior teeth don't try to tip and move forward while you're trying to bring the front teeth backwards. I hope that makes sense for you. So I hope you found this video valuable and I wanted to let you know that I'm the founder of Clearliner Advice which is an online Clearliner education platform that has successfully helped over 150 dentists integrate aligners into their practice. And they have gone on to generate over $9 million in revenue from aligners alone. We help these docs through one of our two paid training programs, Aligner Blueprint, which is our core curriculum online program and Aligner Launchpad, which is our comprehensive program with unparalleled levels of support while starting and growing practices for dentists. All of the course details and information are at this website, clearlineradvisor.co. We also have a couple free training programs that you can dive into that are on the website if you're not ready to invest in education yet. I hope you got a couple pearls out of here. And if you're not following me already, go over to Instagram and follow me. I post almost every single day and I'm sharing Clearliner content all the time. Also, subscribe to the channel because you know this video was super valuable. And if you want more, there's more where that came from. So go ahead and do that. Now, if you thought this was remotely helpful, I actually go way deeper on how to offer aligners in a profitable way. And you're really gonna like this video. So go check it out and I'll see you there.